Hey guys and welcome back to another Python tutorial. In this tutorial we're just going to go into slightly more complicated topics which are going to be merging as well as grouping in pandas. So we're going to be looking at four different type of uh, mergers that are commonly used in pandas and then going to be looking at some aggregation functions as well which will help us um, sort of get a better understanding of how pandas works and just get a better gist of the library in general. So first things we want to do is um, if you haven't already watched the previous tutorial, I would really recommend you do because in that tutorial we we'll basically go through the bare basics of pandas where we look at how we create data frames, what kind of data structures it expects and how we filter data, etc. So um, to begin with, what we're going to do is import pandas and give it an alias of pd. And then what we have over here is similar to last tutorial, we have a data, uh, data structure where we've got a list of different dictionaries. Now, the different dictionaries are rows and the different items are columns as we explained in the last one. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about that. It's basically, this is going to be one data frame uh, that we form in a second, and this is going to be another. So what we're doing in these two lines of code over here is basically taking these two variables, one for category, one for data, and then just converting those data structures, which are a list of dictionaries into pandas data frames using the pd.dataframe method. So we give them new variables. So we have a df main, which stands for data frame main, and then df categories, which stands for data frame um, categories. So let's just inspect what that looks like. So df main, uh, let's just assume we're working on like a budget tracker kind of application here. And that's what the data is about. So the main data frame basically contains the different uh, expenses that we have for different days of the week. So we have a day column, which basically are the different days of the week. We have items, which is basically a short title for what we're spending the money on. And we have the cost, so how much we're actually spending on that item. So on Monday, for example, we basically spent uh, for a gym membership, which cost us $18.99. So a pretty simple concept. Now, let's assume that you wanted to make your app slightly more complicated or let's say you wanted to add more insights and you wanted to categorize these dif different items into categories of their own. So that's where DF categories comes in. In a real life sort of application, you'd have a different mapping for each of the uh, items and then you would just group them together. So this is a mapping uh, which contains the different categories for different sort of items. So obviously there's different types of things that you can purchase. So each of those things, there are relevant categories. So for example, Bananas would obviously fall under groceries, apples also groceries, milk also groceries. In a similar manner, Netflix and cinema would go into entertainment category, and then gym and swimming would obviously fall under health and lifestyle. So that's just a basic understanding for you guys of what's going on. This is just a mapping which will give us the category for each of the items. Now, what's good to notice is that we have five items in here, but six categories, which means that there is an extra um, item in here, which we obviously haven't spent money on. Uh, and this is going to be interesting to see once we start looking at the merges. So what merges essentially do is it'll give you the ability to combine two data frames together based on a common column. So in this case, uh, we have two data frames, one for data, the main data frame and then the categories. So let's say we wanted to merge these together so that we can see categories for each of the items and their costs as well, so that the day, uh, we'd use a common column. So we'd always need a common column between the two uh, to make sense out of it at least. So we have an item column that's common between the two data frames and that's what we're gonna be using to merge them together. So create a new cell below and let's try and use the pd.merge method which is gonna be used uh, commonly to merge data frames. So we do pd.merge and then uh, we put in the different data frames. So we usually can merge only two at a time. So we do df main on the left and df categories as the second data frame. So these are the two data frames we're merging. And now we need to also specify the column that we're merging on. So left on is going to be the left column that we're using to merge. And right on is going to be the right column that we're merging on. Now, once we've specified the common column between the two, uh, we need to also specify what kind of merge we're doing. Now, I'll explain those in a second, but just for context, there's four types of main merges we're going to be going through. So there's the inner merge, the um, left merge, right merge, and then the outer merge. So let's start with inner because that's the default merge um, in case you don't specify the how parameter. So if we do how equals inner, that will go ahead and do an inner merge for us. Now you might be asking yourself what really is an inner merge um, and that is quite simple actually. So 
what's going to happen here is if you've noticed we only get four rows uh sorry five rows of data because obviously it starts at zero so we only have five rows of data but in reality we have six rows here and seven rows here so you might be saying what happened to the rest of the data or why has it gone missing now that's because we do, did an inner merge now what that means is that uh we whichever column we're using as the common column between them which is item in this case it will only keep the data where there is a match so obviously there's a match for gym so it's kept gym it's a match for bananas it's kept bananas match for apple it's kept apple match for milk it's kept milk match for netflix it's kept netflix so that's how many rows one two three four five which is why we end up with five rows now if you look carefully it, there's a cinema row in here uh, for which there is no match in the items and then there is a swimming category for which there's also no match and if we look at this data frame there is also a bowling cat uh, bowling item for which there's no category in the categories data frame now, that's the reason why we only get five because it only keeps the item where there is an, uh, a match for each of the rows so if there's no match for uh, a particular item in both rows at the same time it will just skip those and um, yeah you only get the uh, data frame with where where all the rows contain a match thanks for watching this video so far i'd like to quickly shout out go login which is a company that lets you stay anonymous while browsing different accounts online and manage your private accounts so many of you guys are active online developing businesses on the internet promoting yourself on social networks etc and with a large number of accounts comes obviously the inconvenience and risks that you may get confused by dozens of accounts like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, etc. At the same time, you're obviously constantly risking important data that you store in your browser in case you get banned on certain applications and you lose everything. There is a all-in-one solution to this actually, which is called Go Login. It's a secure platform for managing all your online accounts, which will have a lot of ton of security features like a unique digital footprint for each of your accounts, secure cloud storage under key and lock, digital footprint control through customization of settings, centralized access allocation for the team, etc. Now, if you guys would like to support the video because this video is affiliated, uh, I would highly recommend you guys to click the link in the description and try out for yourself the free trial of GoLogin or purchase it if it supports your needs. Thank you. So now if you look at the opposite end of this, there's a different type of merge, which is called outer. Now, let's say you wanted to keep all the data, regardless of whether there was a match or not, you would use an outer merge. So let's run this and you'll see what I mean. So outer merge is sort of a combination of both inner as well as um, uh, like a left and right merge, which we'll get to in a second. But um, what it does is it will keep items that have the same match. So in this case, Jim has a match, Bananas has a match, Apple and Milk uh, and Netflix also has a match. So obviously those five have uh, got a category item, but for any items that don't have a match, for example, we looked at bowling, right? We had bowling here. And if we look at the categories data frame, there is no category for bowling. So in this case, what Pandas does is it says, oh, there's no, there's no match. So I don't know what category to use. Hence, I'll give it the default value of NAN. Which, is, which stands for not a value or not a number in this case. So um, what that's done is basically given a NAND value for category because it does we don't really have a category for bowling. Now in a similar manner, we also look at the day column here and what we notice is there's NAND for cinema and NAND for swimming. Now that's obviously because if we scroll up here, if we look at cinema, we have no record of cinema and we look at swimming, we have no record of swimming either. So obviously we, the, the code doesn't know what to use as the as the day uh, data or as the cost data for either of those things. So that's why it's done none for both cost and day. Hopefully that made a bit more sense to you guys in terms of how inner and outer merges work. But basically they're the counter opposites of each other. Inner only keeps rows that have matches in both data frames and outer basically will keep everything regardless of whether it matches or not and just replace the missing values with none now if you've understood inner and outer left and right should really be a breeze because um what left essentially does is it will look at the data frame that's on the left so positioning kind of matters here so data frame on the left is df main so if you do left here and we run it what you notice is all the rows from the left data frame will be kept regardless of whether there is a match on the right or not. So if you do a left merge, you can be guaranteed that 
you will always have the same amount of rows in the merge as your left data frame. So there's six here. If you look here, there's six here as well. Now for any missing data, for example, we have on Friday, we have bowling, right? On Friday, we have bowling. And obviously in the categories data frame, we don't have a category for bowling, which is a bit of a problem. So like the outer merge, if for any missing um, values, it would just use none. And that's quite simple, actually. Now, once we have understood left, right is basically the opposite of left, just like how inner is the opposite of outer. If you do right, you basically be guaranteed the same amount of rows as there is in your right data frame, which is the DF categories. And in this case, any missing values, for example, we have cinema and swimming in the um, categories list, but we didn't spend any money on cinema or swimming. So we don't know anything about the day or the cost. And in this case, it just replaces those values with none because it doesn't have any data for it. That's basically it, to be honest. Um, that's all the different type of mergers that you'd commonly use in pandas. Now that we know a bit more about the mergers, what we'll do here is let's just do an inner merge because obviously we just want data where both things match for now. It will make the most sense because we have the most complete set of data. Let's give this a variable. Let's call this merged equals and that will basically store the merged data frame into the merged variable. Let's look at how that looks like. And obviously, as expected, we have five rows like we've seen before. Now, we're going to look at grouping and aggregation now as the final part of this tutorial. And um, the way grouping works is, let's say you have some duplicates in this row, or let's say you wanted to find the total cost of all your items for uh, by day of week, because obviously here it's split down by day, uh, item, as well as category. So you, let's say you just wanted to find the total cost of all the things you spent for Monday and other days of the week. You don't really care about the item or category. What you do here is use a group and then an aggregate function. So you do dot group by, impact and you do by equals and the by will basically what be the column that you want to group by or like what you want the aggregation to be done by so let's say we want to do it by day of the week we do by day and then as index we set that to false because otherwise it will basically take that column and set it as index which kind of makes it harder to access so we don't want that problem and then at the end of this you basically put your aggregate function so aggregate function basically means so for each of the uh, items that you're grouping together, what do you want to do with the numeric values? So in this case, the numeric values are the cost. So do we want to find the average across the days of the week? Do we want to find the sum, the max, the min, etc.? So let's just do the sum for now, which will give us the total spend or total cost across each of the days of the week. Let's run this. And like I said before, it will only keep the numeric value as well as the item that we're grouping by. So in this case, we get a nice group by, which shows us by day of the week, or the total cost for the items, uh, as well as the um, day of the week. If you look at the original data frame, uh, if, you, if you wanted to double check, you can, but I, I trust pandas enough. So you, it's, what is basically done for Monday is grouped by day of the week. So any instance where there's Monday, it's just summed all the costs together. So it's done 18.99 plus this, plus this, plus this, and then put that all together as a neat sort of report for us. Now, if you, let's say you wanted to group by um, category instead. So instead of finding your cost by day, you want to find out oh, what, what sort of category are you spending the most money on. You do group by category instead. And this will give you a different result because uh, you've got three categories in here. You've got health and lifestyle, entertainment and groceries. And groceries sort of repeats three times. So it's for this one, it's just kept gym as 1899 because there's only one. For this one, there's three repetitions. So it's added these three values together and then given you the sum of groceries there and then entertainment um similar sort of thing as well so that's basically what you do if you want to group by just one item let's say you wanted to now um, group by day of the week as well as um the category you can just do instead of a single item you can specify a list and then category and date and boom you have your group by by category as well as day so what it's done now is for each of the unique days and categories it's done a sum so in this case monday health and lifestyle is a unique one monday groceries is a unique one and tuesday entertainment is a unique one and for each of those duplicates it's just done a sum now just to keep things slightly more basic i'm going to do a single group by here by day and let's look at the other aggregate functions that we can use as well so some useful ones, uh, obviously I'm not going to cover all, but some useful ones apart from some would be to use mean as well. 
this will instead of summing the duplicates together it will um, find the average of them and then give you the average cost uh, you can also use min which is, stands for minimum so what this does is uh, for each of the um, for each of the things it will check what the minimum cost was and then it will give you that so for example on Monday uh, the minimum spend was two pound um, two pound fifty and uh, yeah that's basically what it's doing and then on Tuesday uh, the minimum spend was 499 so that's basically the value you get now the reason why it's also done item and grocery is because if I'm not wrong it's trying to do like a alphabetic sort as well so it will try and sort by the first alphabet I believe the minimum um, obviously you didn't if you didn't want those you can just drop the columns uh, if you just want the cost so we can just do open brackets twice and then specify only the columns that we need so we can do day and cost and that will give us just the columns that we need um, now if we do the same thing again for max same thing it will group by day and then it will give you the max cost for monday which was 18.99 and tuesday there's only one item anyway so it's done 4.99 um, and that's pretty much it for this tutorial uh, there's obviously a lot of other functions in pandas uh, like renaming columns dropping duplicates filling na values etc but if you'd like to see a tutorial on that please leave a comment in the um, comments below and i shall see your beautiful faces in the next tutorial peace